I will never forget the first time I was asked to give neostigmine and got immediately yelled at. I was left pretty confused until I became a CRNA, until I went to CRNA school and I learned more about it. So here's everything you need to know about neostigmine so that you can give this drug safely, whether you're in the operating room or in a PACU or in ICU. Neostigmine is an anticholinesterase designed to reverse the action of a paralytics. In order to understand this better, I'm gonna pull up a picture. It works to block the action of an enzyme called acetylcholinesterase. Acetyl cholinesterase is an enzyme that we have in our bodies that normally breaks down something called acetylcholine. Acetylcholine works to create muscle contractions in our body. It does lots of other things as well, but it works at the nicotinic receptor at the neuromuscular junction where the nerve and the muscle meet to trigger movement through a chain reaction. The way that our paralytics work during surgery to keep the patient still during open heart surgery, for example, like what my patient had, is by working to block acetylcholine from working. So it competitively binds for these sites and it stops stops muscle contraction from being able to occur. The way that neostigmine works is it prevents the breakdown of our body's own acetylcholine by preventing this enzyme acetylcholinesterase from breaking it down. So as the acetylcholine builds up, builds up, builds up, builds up, can actually outcompete the muscle relaxant, the paralytic again, and get back to work and allowing muscle contraction to occur. So this was very important for a patient with myasthenia gravis, and we can talk about that in the comments if you're curious as to why. But unfortunately, this is not the only effect that acetylcholine has on our body. Acetylcholine also works on our muscarinic receptors throughout the body, has lots of other effects like bradycardia on the heart when it binds the muscarinic receptors. It also has other negative effects. It's salivation, increased lacrimation, increased urination, increased defecation, GI upset, emesis, vomiting. It can also cause meiosis, pupillary constriction. So whenever we give neostigmine, we don't want all of this uninhibited work of acetylcholine because that could be very dangerous for a patient that could cause a severe bradycardia plus all of these other nasty side effects. We always give it with an anticholinergic drug that blocks the work of acetylcholine at the muscarinic receptors like glycopyrrolate or even atropine. It is so important to give the glycopyrrolate before the neostigmine or at the very least at the same exact time. If you're looking to learn more about paralytics, reversals, train of four monitoring, check out our train of four monitoring lecture in the Confident Care Academy. Kate does a fantastic job doing a deep dive into the neuromuscular junction. Let me know what questions you have in the comment below and I will see you in the CCA membership.